Hello, viewers, once again, uh, we bring you uh, the Word of God. Um, this is uh, Reverend Daniel Yeboah, Future Leaders Deliverance Center. And that's my lovely wife, um, Evangelist Janada Yeboah. Um, we thank the Lord for your lives, all that God has been doing in your life through this um, broadcast, Supernatural and Kana. We know that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Meaning the miracles that he performed when he was alive, he is still performing those miracles. His signs and his wonders yes. are moving in our lives. Only if we will have faith and position ourselves to receive that which the Lord is doing. Beloved, I know this broadcast has been helping you this hour if you are watching me. Wherever you watch us from, whatever media you used to watch us, we are asking that you let us know what the Lord is doing in your life. Amen. Send us your testimonies yes. through our information, our, our email address or website or call us. You know, send us your prayer requests and uh, things that you want us to intercede and join our faith with your faith in the spirit and intercede on your behalf. Once again, this is Supernatural Encounter. Now, yeah. we know that love is in the air. You know, um, next week on uh, February, fe February 14th, right? Yes. It's uh, Valentine's Day. And many um, lovers, various diverse relationships are getting ready to celebrate each other through Valentine's Day. So we decided to, you know, use this um, broadcast today to speak into your relationships, whatever relationship that you are uh, having now. Yes. In any, any dimension, in any level, that we use this broadcast to speak into that relationship, yes. to strengthen that relationship, no matter which form or shape that relationship is in. So this hour, um, we bring you a word entitled, What Makes Marriage Relationships Work? Yes. What Makes Marriage relationship works. We target a marriage because that's very honorable in the sight of the Lord, but we know there are many relationships that people are celebrating now. Those that will be leading to marriages, you could hear us now, even as we speak into your lives. Could you read Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23? Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23. Okay, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 5 to 22. Ephesians 5. All right. And it reads, looks like it's a little bit slow. You have it. I Ephesians have, chapter yeah. 5, verse 22 to 33. My internet is not working. Wives, submit yourself to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the savior. I get it. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in, in everything. everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave him, himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church, without stain or wrinkle or any blemish, but holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. Amen. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body, just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's the foundational scripture, beloved, that establishes uh, how we should treat each and other yes. in our marital relationship. But I believe that also goes to, you know, how v various and diverse relationships should treat each other. Now, let's look at, because we cannot talk about marriages and leave out the aspect of children. 
Because children are as a result of marriages. So look at uh, Ephesians 6, 1 to 4. Ephesians chapter 6, 1 to 4. Okay. And it says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with the promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, um, I, I've already spoken about how, you know, Valentine's Day is coming up, and I believe uh, if we write, there's about um, 160 um, greeting cards that will be sent out across the whole um, country, United States, and I believe across the world. Now, at the same time, we know there's love in the air, but there are also relationships that are at the verge of a breakup. Yeah. And also marriages that are going through divorce, terrible divorce as we speak. Mm -hmm. So it's not everybody that is enjoying or uh, it's happy that Valentine's Day is coming around because it's going to re remind them of their pain right. and, and the trauma that they have been through in a relationship. Right. But I just want to throw a little bit of light about Valentine's Day. I mean, what, what does that mean? I remember back in high school, you know, I already know what it was, but at that very morning of the day, you know, you know, everybody that knew someone and liked someone picked up a, a plant or a flower and, you know, just gave it to them. And the whole campus was littered with, you know, flowers and leaves all around. Mm -hmm. Now, I realized that Valentine's Day has um, a, a, a history, a tradition history with Christian and Asian Roman tradition. So it's mixed together. So Valentine was a priest who saved a couple that, you know, um, where, where I guess didn't the, 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 the emperor who was the, the Roman king by then. This is about AD 270, or around that time, very long time ago, uh, the, during the Middle Ages. So Valentine was a priest who stepped in um, to fight against a law that was established by Emperor Claudia II that single men made better warriors so they should not be married so they could go to war and fight. And so he was marrying couples uh, secretly and the news got to um, the, the emperor. So he was cast into jail. And um, history uh, makes us to know that even as um, Valentine was, before he was um, um, colonized to be a saint, he wrote a letter to the, uh, the jealous um, daughter whom he fell in love with. And based on that letter, um, we came up with Valentine's Day, which was a celebration of heroic and uh, romantic and um, unselfish attitude uh, towards one, one's lover. And so the other aspect is um, when um, the Roman um, goddess for agriculture and fertility was being celebrated, festivals that were in honor of that, that goddess. So we see that the foundation was laid and it has both Christian and pagan rela relation. So what the, the, the Christian community did was that they... Uh, kind of wanted to um, use the, the, the festival, which was in February, uh, and that's when uh, St. Valentine was killed to celebrate his death. And that's how come Valentine's Day came. Amen. But I realized that when it comes to uh, marriages, there are um, uh, negative statistics that has been all around. That, you know, there's one in every... One in every two um, marriages fall apart and do not work. And it, which means both Christians and um, both non-Christians, the general public, it's a 50-50, which is not true. But people are driven towards um, these negative um, reports. Now we have a research that came up to, you know, kind of um, counteract that uh, research. And this research was done by a, a, a foundation called Christians 
are hateful hypocrites and other lies that you have been told. Christians are hateful hypocrites and other lies that you have been told. This research disapproved these negative statistics, and it was proven that Christian relationships and marriages were, had enjoyed longevity and solid foundation and quality than the general public. And so we realized that the research came up with a statistics that Catholic groups were 31% less likely to divorce. Protestants, meaning denominational and non-denominational Christian relationships, the percentage were 35 less likely to divorce as compared to the general uh, population. And Jewish couples were 97% less likely to divorce as compared to their general um, population. So we realize that this issue of divorce as being a Christian is disproved. It is just a way of, uh, you know, people having the chance to shout um, the word hypocrite against um, Christians. Now, let's look at them. Um, also, um, Christians that just confess the faith, but they really, you know, do not practice the faith of Christianity. They just confess that they are Christians without actually um, participating in the, in the uh, practices and just be sold out for Christianity. It was realized that 20% of them was more likely to get a divorce than the general public. Now, the question is, um, we realize that there are many challenges that marriages and relationships go through. And, and some of it is trash and finances. Now, trust, I realize, you know, it could be, you know, issues where maybe a spouse had done something wrong to another spouse. It could be infidelity. It could be any you know, lies and all kind of uh, issues that can, can affect trust. Yes. And, but we should not forget that Christ loved the church and he died so that our sins will be forgiven mm. as Christians, as the church. So in the issue of trust, we all need to um, love each other and forgive our, our partners if only we are going to stay with them when they have wronged us and forgive them of their sins. Going to the Lord and asking the Lord to give you the grace, the strength to deal with that issue. And the next level is finances. It's another area that the enemy uses to challenge many relationships and many marriages. Finances. It could be the husband not working, the wife working, and vice versa. So this, we need to come together. And, and also the issue of love comes in. And that if the husband is somebody that has been taken over by the spirit of laziness, then he might need deliverance. Yes. He might need deliverance. Also to pray that the Lord opens doors of uh, financial opportunities uh, into that household. And the next one is intimacy. Mm. And we realize that uh, it's a vital part of uh, re mar marital relationships. So which means uh, we cannot hold back sex unless we are sick or we are <laughs> fasting and seeking the face of God Amen. and come in agreement that this period of uh, this time, I want to seek the face of God. So maybe can we not, you know, come together until it's over. But then you have to make it known to your partner. Amen. Now let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 4. It says, the wife has no power over her body, but, but, but the husband. Likewise, the husband has no power over his own body, but the wife. Amen. So sex is very vital, and we are not to use it to manipulate each, each other in that regard. Now, we also have generational curses, generational curses that also hinder both relationship and marriages. Now, which means if your, your background have re, uh, experienced divorce, then most likely those same familiar spirits that perpetrated those divorce in your parents or grandparents have the tendency, the proclivity, to bring those divorces up into your marriage. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And let us not forget that when we marry from both families, your wife and your husband, you come together as one. So any demonic force that is coming from your husband's background and your wife's background comes together even when you come together to fight you. 
And that is an area that we need to seek the face of the Lord and ask the power of God to break and destroy these curses through coming together in prayer and in fasting. Now, there's also the issue of spiritual wives and husbands as a result of outdoor worshiping and watching pornography. Mm. So, beloved, you who watches pornography and outdoor worshiping, the issue is that you could, you know, have demons that will marry you. And this area of your intimacy and your affection with your loved one will be affected because you will no longer have affection for your wife or your husband. So if you have fallen into pornography, seek the face of the Lord fast and pray. Seek deliverance from any church that the power of God is moving to get delivered so that that challenge will be taken away. And also we realize that there's counseling that we need to go through. But counseling do not work if it, there is an issue of demonic forces that is also in the midst of um, bringing this chaos, confusion, disturbance, this all illness, distraction that these couples are going through. So counseling should match with prayer and fasting and yes. deliverance that the power of God will move and set you free, that the counseling will work, and the love, the love of God will be shined in your relationship. Amen. Do you have any advice for our viewers in, the, in this regard? I do, I do. By the grace of God, we have been happily married. That's Amen. only Hallelujah. because Amen. we live by the Bible yes. and not by the opinions and philosophies of, yes. of men. Yes. And just some advice, these are just some pointers that I have. If you're dating someone of a different culture, yes. it's very important that they get to know each other's cultures. Yes, so very that important. if once they get married, it's not a culture shock. Yes. Because if you are of one culture and your spouse is of another culture and you don't take that time to get to know their cultures, it can be quite shocking. Yes. yes. Now you might say, Well, we're already married, I didn't do that, you know. I didn't do that before. Well, now it's a great time to get to know your spouse's culture. Amen. Now, keep in mind, now that you're married, it's too late to be opinionated about their, their culture. Yes. You're already married. Yes. So just adapt to it and be mindful of your spouse's culture yes. and just embrace it. Yeah, very important. Very Amen. important. Amen. Amen. Now, the second point I have is choosing your partner is one of the biggest decisions you can make in life. Yes. You know, you really have to pray, men and women, who God wants you to marry. And as far as ladies, I would suggest that, you know, if a man approaches you, you need to seek the face of God. If he says, hey, the Lord told me you were my wife. You're mm. going to be my wife. You need to pray and ask God if that is true because that might just be his opinion, but God might have someone else for you. Now, gentlemen, I would say, you might have a picture of who you want to be your wife. You might already have it programmed in your mind, but yes. God has someone else that will take you to your destiny, that person he has ordained from the very beginning to be your wife. So both men and women, they need to pray about their partners. Amen. 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 Yeah, that's a good point. Good, valid, solid point. So. Amen. The next one I have is marital, I call them heated discussions. I don't mm. call them arguments. I don't call it what the world calls. Mm. I just call it heated discussions. Mm -hmm. You need to be mindful of which heated discussion you take up. Mm -hmm. You can't take up all the heated discussions. Who didn't put the, t the top back on the toothpaste? Who didn't close the door? Who didn't do that? You have to choose your discussions wisely because that can cause confusion. Yes. A big helpful point is when your spouse comes home from work, that is not the time to address something that you're irritated about. Mm, yeah. Because right, by the time good. they yeah. come home from work, they're tired. They're tired. Yes. They probably they're been exhausted. sitting in traffic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They've been they're thinking about the things that went on in the office. And it's not the time when they come in from work looking to come home to a loving, embraceive husband or wife and the children, and you're about to nag. But the time to do it is at a peaceful time, at a right time. Yes. Now, if that topic is a touchy topic, you need to seek the face of the Lord because maybe the Lord does not want you to address it. Maybe he's working on that issue. So yes. you need to make your flesh and your emotions be submissive and allow the Lord to work on your behalf. Yes, that was powerful. Amen. That's powerful. Yeah, Amen. That's good. 
Just two more I have. Mm -hmm. Date nights. Date nights are super, super yes. important. Yes. They are important because it allows you to spend time with your spouse. You guys get to interact with each other. You don't have all the cares of the work and all the responsibilities on your mind. It's just you and uh, your yes, spouse. Yes. Now, if you have children, we call it an emergency date night monthly because you have to get away. You have to focus on your spouse. And I didn't understand that as a child. My parents would go on vacation and go out to eat. And I'm just like feeling like, why? Can they I live go? In you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But now that I have children, we yes. have children, yes. we understand we'll be back. We're having yeah. mommy and Qu daddy. Quality, night. quiet time. Yes. <laughs> quality, quiet yes. time. Yes. Quality, quiet time. The last one that I have is that you need to include Jesus in your marriage. Amen. Jesus Amen. is the success to your marriage. Jesus is the tool to your marriage. Jesus is the wisdom to your marriage. Yes. Everything you guys need, Jesus is. And I would advise you guys to pray together yes. once a week, yes. 15 to 20 minutes. Yes. That won't hurt you. Yes. Just agree with your spouse, agree on your destiny, what you believe in God to do. Now, you guys also need to go to church. Yes. But if you're going to different churches, you guys need to sit down together as one and see whose church you guys are going to attend. Because attending two different churches, isn't that division a little bit? Yes, it is. It is. It is. Amen. So you That's guys should. Valid, solid yeah. point. Yeah. Amen. So make a decision what church you're going to go to, but make sure you keep Jesus in your the marriage. center. Amen. So we realize that um, th that was valid, good, solid points for our viewers. We realize that uh, through these type of statistics, also 52% of very happy married couples said Jesus was at the center Amen. of their good marriage. Yes. Now, beloved, uh, this is um, some of the pillars of um, the foundations of marriage. Yes. That your faith is very important. It's, it's different when people confess, profess that they are Christians, but they do not practice the, the, the beliefs of Christianity. And this is why many are thinking that these, some of these divorces are true Christians. Mm -hmm. But some of us, we profess to be Christian, but we do not practice the, you know, the study our word, read our scriptures, you know, submit ourselves to a serious body of believers. And also, we need to surround ourselves with friends and family members that are very uh, serious with marriage, and that will encourage us to keep um, our marriages. Okay. And this is how we shall experience quality and longevity in our marriages. And so, also, we are sinners. The issue that we have with selfishness is because we are sinners. So, when it comes to sacrificing uh, with un unconditionally for our partners, it's very hard for us to do. And what we need to do is to reflect on the love of Jesus Christ as we read in Ephesians chapter, chapter 5, that he loved the church and he died for the church in his leadership of the church. So we need to reflect on that nature of Christ as the head of the church. We love the church and we should love our partner in that regard Amen. and not be selfish that we may be able to sacrifice to keep and maintain the relationship. But how will we be able to do that? We need Jesus. We need to accept Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior, yes. that he will be our, our leader in our relationship. Beloved, I realize that we need relationships. We need relationships. But sometimes it takes bad relationships to find a good relationship. So what we need to do is, what we need to do is that we... We need to, what we need to do is that we ask seek the face of the Lord before we come out of a relationship. That let God release you from one relationship before you go into another relationship. Amen. Because many at times people have carried their baggages that they have from various relationships and taken it into the other relationship. That's why this relationship do not work. So let God release you that you might be able to enjoy a solid uh, quality relationship. Now, beloved, this is the time if you want to accept Jesus Christ, uh, I'll, I'll give you this opportunity. This that we are talking about, your relationship and your problems, you cannot really enjoy in your relationship until you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. 
So you could pray this prayer with me now uh, and ask the Lord to come and dwell in your heart. Father God, I thank you for saving me. I thank you for forgiving me of my sins. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. I invite you to come and live into my heart and be my Lord and personal Savior. And I'll serve you, Lord Jesus, for the rest of my life. Beloved, I want to pray for you that your relationship will experience the love of God. Any demon, any spirit that has held your relationship bound, I pray that the power of God will move now through this broadcast and destroy every familiar spirit, every generational curse that is hindering your marriage in the area of infertility, in the area of barrenness. The power of God move and begin to destroy those forces over your marriage. Any problem that you are going through, I pray and I commit you into the hands of the Lord now. Even as you hear me pray, accept all but the power of God coming to you through this broadcast. God bless you. God bless your relationship. God destroy every demonic force, every works, every plans, every satanic assignment that have been held are held in your relationship bound in the area of chaos, confusion, disturbance, disorderliness, distraction. Spiritual wives and husbands that are pestering your dreams, that have taken over your affection. I pray that the power of God will destroy those forces over your life, that your, your affection will be restored. Uh, low sperm count, the issue of low sperm count, be destroyed over your life. That demonic force be destroyed over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we give you all the glory and honor, and honor for peace in your people's relationship in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We just want to thank you for watching us. Stay tuned. If you would like to follow us, our information is on the screen. And God bless you. Amen.